I wanted to share a problem today by someone who is, for my money, one of the best puzzle posers out there. Katrina Ag, you can see her on Twitter and I'm sure other places, at cshearer41. This was a puzzle that she posed on January 7th and I absolutely love it. First of all, everything you're looking at that looks like a square is a square and our job is to figure out the area of that yellow shaded region, that triangle at the bottom of the larger square. We're given some important information here. We have lengths of two and four across the top of the square, but that's it. And from that, we're supposed to figure out the area of that shaded region. Now I've solved this already. I have the solution and I'm confident I'm right, but I'm also confident that there must be a more elegant way to solve this problem than I did. So I would love it if you would comment down below, how did you solve this question? What is the elegant solution that I'm missing? Here's how I went about it. So first of all, with these lengths of two and four across the top, we can tell, okay, so the side length of this particular square is six. And again, everything that looks like a square is a square. So that length is six. This length here is six. This side over here, not that I think it matters, is also six. Importantly for our purposes, that base of six is the same as the base of the triangle that we're interested in. So already, if I can just figure out the height of that particular triangle, then I can simply plug that height in along with the base of six to our area formula for a triangle. Area equals base times height divided by two. So it feels like we're already at least halfway there. Now, some other things we already know is being that these are squares, anywhere that they have corners, we are looking at right angles. And so we should also have a bunch of right triangles in this particular figure. Right off the bat, in fact, we can say this triangle over here is a right triangle with legs of two and four. And so we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of that hypotenuse, which would also give us the lengths along those two smaller squares. Two squared plus six squared equals C squared, where C is that total length across both of those smaller squares. Two squared is four, six squared 36. Four and 36 make 40. And then of course, we want to take the square root here on both sides. And the square root of 40, once we simplify it, is the same thing as two times the square root of 10. That's nice because again, we can see that is two of the lengths of the square put together. So each one of those must be one root 10. Because they're squares, we also know any other length along the edge of those squares is root 10. And that's going to help us because it gives us another right triangle. This one, the 45, 45, 90 right triangle that we see anytime we split a square in half. And now it's feeling like, wow, we are just barreling along toward a solution here because the hypotenuse of that particular right triangle, which is also the diagonal of the smaller square, is the same thing as the second length along that yellow triangle that we're interested in. Root 10 squared plus root 10 squared is going to give us the length of that diagonal or of that hypotenuse, they're the same thing. We'll just keep calling it c squared for fun. Root 10 squared is 10, root 10 squared is 10. And so c squared in this case, again, c being the hypotenuse along that yellow triangle is equal to 20. Once more, if we simplify that, we get two root five is equal to that hypotenuse, that diagonal. So this right here is two times the square root of five. But for me, this is the first point in the problem where I ran into some trouble. I know what I'm interested in is the height for that yellow triangle. And I can tell that I have the hypotenuse of a right triangle that contains that height. If I could just figure out what that height is, I'm done. The problem is I don't know what the base is along that bottom portion of the yellow triangle. I know the whole base is six, but I don't have a good way to figure out just part of that base, which means I don't have a good way to just keep using Pythagorean theorem to work my way backwards to that height. And so at this point, I started angle chasing. Let's go back to that two by six right triangle. We're going to call the larger angle in that right triangle A and the smaller angle B. So there's A there's B. Because these are angles that are not the right angle in a right triangle, we know that A and B are complementary, meaning they add up to 90 degrees. And so anywhere else that we can see an A or a B along with a right angle, we know that we're gonna have all three. For example, right here, we've got A plus 90 degrees. The rest of that angle making the straight angle up here must be B. 
and so we can label that one as B. If we can figure out any other right triangles that contain those same angles of A and B, then we can leverage what are called similar triangles. Similar triangles are those that have the same three angle measures, and therefore their sides have to be proportional. Not necessarily equal lengths like we would have if they were congruent triangles, but again, definitely proportional. So for example, if we extended out the side length along that upper smaller square, we could see that would be a right angle, that would be A, and we could leverage our proportionality to figure out what this length is and what that length is. But that triangle isn't really anywhere near what we need, so we're not gonna focus on that one. I do have another AB90 triplet though, and it's gonna be located a lot closer to the length we actually need. It's down here in this lower left-hand corner of the diagram. Take a look at that smaller square for just a second. We can tell, obviously, that smaller square is a right angle, and right next to it, we've got the angle B. But the larger square here also makes a right angle. And so this missing portion here must be that same angle measure B. One way to think about it is as if we started with the smaller triangle and then rotated counterclockwise through B degrees. We can see that that same rotation confirms over here on the left that we are rotating through B degrees counterclockwise. Once we know this angle is B, we can see it's in this right triangle here, which means that the other angle up here must be A. And we have the AB90 triplet that we need to say this triangle is similar to the original two by six right triangle we looked at initially. So let's go ahead and write that triplet down. We had a short side of two, a longer side of six, and a hypotenuse of two root 10. Again, that's how we figured out the lengths on the smaller square were root 10 each. We can see, in fact, that's one of the lengths in this new AB90 right triangle. But it's not the hypotenuse anymore, it's actually the longer side. So we're going to write down here root 10, and we're going to put that in the position of the longer side which in this larger version of the triangle was six. Again, similar triangles all have proportional side lengths, so at this point we can take advantage of proportions or something like cross products to solve for the missing sides on this smaller version of that same triangle. Specifically, I'm gonna say, okay, two root 10 times root 10 is 20. Root 10 times root 10 is 10, two times 10 is 20. And so what I'm looking for is 20 equals six times blank. You know, we could call it x if we want, but it's the hypotenuse of that right triangle that we're solving for. This means that x is the same thing as 20 divided by six, which is the same thing as 10 thirds. Using that same technique, we could also find the smaller side, though if we wanted to, we could also do it with Pythagorean theorem. In this particular case, we're gonna end up with root 10, no, that's not right. Yeah, in this particular case, we would end up with root 10 thirds. So let's go ahead and go down here and label that. That's root 10 thirds. We could also say the hypotenuse is 10 thirds, but we're not going to need that. What we wanna do now is move over to this right triangle, which has as one of its legs the missing length that we need to compute that area. We also know one of its angles. This is a pair of vertical angles. So if this lower left-hand angle is A, then across from it, we also have that same angle measure A, meaning this up here is B, and once again, we are working with an AB90 right triangle. Remember, the total length along that square was root 10, so if this is a third of root 10, this must be the other two thirds of root 10. And we can take that back up to our proportion here, because all of these similar right triangles use the same lengths proportionally speaking. This time we knew the hypotenuse, two root 10 over three, and you should be able to tell easily enough, oh, that's a third as much as the original right triangle that we were working with. So rather than having to do the cross multiplication thing, we're just gonna take those lengths in that original right triangle and divide by three. Two divided by three is two thirds, so this short side down here would be two thirds, but the one we're interested in, the long side of that right triangle, would be six divided by three is two. And now we have everything we need to compute that yellow shaded region. Area of a triangle, again, base times height divided by two. We knew the base was six from early on. We just figured out the height was two. When we divide by two, that'll make for some nice cancellation. And there it is, the area of the yellow shaded region is six. 
So fair enough, right? That's the answer. But like I said, the fact that this is two and two was one of the lengths we were originally given makes me awfully suspicious. Feels like we should be able to split that big triangle into four chunks, basically. And it's almost like we're just reversing the information we were given earlier. This tri- did I say triangle a second ago? If I did, I meant square. I would fix it in editing, but I'm not that good of an editor. I can see that this square is a four by four square, and that makes this square in the lower right-hand corner a two by two square. And it just feels to me like there must be some clever way to get that information without doing all the angle chasing and similar triangle stuff that we did. So please help me out. If you can figure out the elegant way to get to that height of two, I would love to know what it is. If you like problems like this, most importantly, go follow Katrina on Twitter. Again, cshearer41. She just poses the best problems. This was a problem she put up on January 7th, but also like this video, subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more stuff like this, and otherwise I will see y'all next time.